I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. An app that was near and dear to all of us is dead. It, it was murdered, actually. Murdered by those heartless bastards at Google. Do no evil. Killing innocent Chrome apps. Yeah, the Betaflight Configurator Chrome app is dead now. So, what are we going to do? I'm going to tell you. Google has been warning for a while now that they were going to kill off Chrome apps. If you didn't know, a Chrome app is an app location, an application that runs on the Google Chrome web browser. Uh, and the nice thing about that is that Chrome runs on so many different operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Chromebooks even. And so if a developer writes a Chrome app, anybody running any of those operating systems can use their app. And it's great for users who want to run weirdo operating systems like Linux. I just see you guys out there with your long white beards. I know who you are. And, and it's good for developers because a developer can just release one version of their app and many, many different people can, can uh, use it. They don't have to support different operating systems. If you look at something like the uh, BL Heli Suite, BL Heli Suite is the app that's used to configure BL Heli ESCs. Uh, it's only available for Windows because they just, I don't know, they just can't be bothered to write a Mac version or a Linux version. Kind of don't blame them. No offense to you guys, but it's a pain in the ass to run, run three different versions of your own app. And if you folks running those operating systems want to use BL Heli Suite, what do you got to do? You got to use a virtual machine. Uh, you got to use an emulator. Um, which is annoying. So Chrome apps were great, but here's the thing. Apparently, like, nobody ever used them except us. We used them. Betaflight Configurator, KISS Configurator used to be, I, I, don't, I don't think it still is, uh, and Raceflight was before Raceflight 1. These are all Chrome apps. Blackbox Explorer, Chrome app. It's so nice to have them, but apparently we're in the minority, and uh, like so many minorities in this world, we are going to get persecuted. Stop. Just stop. Don't go there. Some of you right now are going to Google and typing beta flight configurator. And you're like, Joshua, what are you talking about? Here it is right here, you dummy. Uh, and oh, the product listing. What do you mean they killed it? No, no, no. If you, as of today, if you have the URL, you can still get to the configurator. But look at this. When I search beta flight in the actual Chrome Web Store search box, absolutely no results see so you can you could still find it and in fact if you have it installed on your system it will still work as of today but that's gonna that's gonna go away so you need to go ahead and do what i'm about to show you asap the betaflight devs have seen this coming for a long time and they've released and now you can download i'm going to show you how a the betaflight standalone app and the good news is it's available for windows mac os and linux so everybody pretty much can run it to get this app, you need to go to the URL that I've got on screen, or it's down in the video description as well. And this is where you can download the latest release of the Betaflight Configurator. At the time of this recording, the latest release is 10.0.0, but whatever you should download whatever the latest stable release that you see at the time that you go to download it. And you can see that there's a version for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And of course, I'm running Windows, so I'm going to demonstrate the Windows version. What you have to do on Mac OS and Linux may be slightly different, and unfortunately, I can't demo that. But if you're running one of those OSs, you probably can figure it out, because Mac OS is so easy to use, you hardly need any training at all. And if you're using Linux, then let's face it, you're a giant nerd and you know how to do this stuff already. So I'll click on the Windows zip file to download it. And that's going to pull it down into my downloads folder. Uh, on, on Chrome, I can do this arrow. I can click it and do show in folder to open my downloads folder. And here is the Betaflight Configurator. This is the zip file that was downloaded. This is a file archive and it needs to be extracted. And the simplest way to do that is probably just to double click on it. Now, in my case, I am running the program 7-zip and to manage my zip files. But exactly what happens when you double click on it will depend on how your operating system is configured. You might just, this window might just change to show the content, whatever. After you double click on it, you'll probably see the folder Betaflight Configurator. And then you need to drag that to somewhere where you'll be able to find it again. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. 
Having done that, I can open this folder by double clicking on it, and here is the Betaflight Configurator.exe uh, executable application. And now I'm using Windows, so I have a .exe file as my application. If you're on one of those other operating systems, you would see you wouldn't see that file extension. You'd probably just see Betaflight Configurator. And when I double click to run that. Ta da! Here we are, Betaflight Configurator, just like it ever was. Now, I say just like it ever was, but actually, it's not quite like it ever was. One thing that Chrome Apps did was they automatically updated when new versions were available. And actually, this was, some people found this to be a little bit annoying because if you, not everybody runs the latest version of Betaflight. Some people are running older versions and they don't want to upgrade. And when the configurator would upgrade automatically, the new version of the configurator was sometimes not compatible with the older versions of Betaflight that you had on your quad. So one day you'd wake up, you'd plug your quad in, and suddenly the configurator didn't work right anymore. And that was annoying. So you'll have to, for now at least, manually update this by going back to that website and downloading new versions. I believe that the, uh, the configurator has a pop-up that warns you when a new version is available, but you'll have to go download it manually. And actually, this will a little bit of a hassle for those of us who stay on the latest version, but it's actually kind of nice for those of you out there who want to stay on older versions. Now you have the option to do that if you so desire. And that's going to do it for this video, short and sweet today. Uh, times they are a changing, and so must we. If you think there's anything I overlooked or any questions you've got, leave them down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, happy flying.